in this video, we take a look at a really nice theorem called Chevin's theorem. And what it does, let's just talk about what it is first, and then we'll talk about a, a brief explanation as to why it works. I'm not going to call it a proof um, because I'm not going to formalize it that much, but it's pretty close. Um, so let's just first talk about what this does. You have um, uh, triangle ABC, and then you have three of these Chevin's drawn in, and um, they all um, intersect in the middle um, at a single point here. Um, and if they intersect at a single point, then the ratios, now it actually doesn't matter the order that you do these in. All that matters is that you either do it clockwise or counterclockwise. Um, but it, it, so if you, if you start with the one closest to the A for the first ratio, then you start with the one closest to the B for the second ratio, and the one closest to the C for the third ratio, or you could do it vice versa, and it would work out as well, meaning AE over EC equals CD over BB, or um, which equals BF over FA. Either one of those works for this problem. But where you use this is in two ways. First off, you use it to prove that um, three Chevians in a triangle are concurrent to each other. Uh, concurrent with each other. I mean, they all meet at a single point. The other thing you can use it for is if they are concurrent, and you know that, and then you know some other things about um, these side lengths, you can quickly find something else. So, for instance, if you knew this was 2 and this was 3 and this was 4 and this was 5, right? Well, if BD is, over DC is 4 fifths and EC over AE is 3 halves, and AF over FB, we don't know. Well, you can find AF over FB very easily, in that it equals AF over FB times 6 fifths equals 1, multiply both sides by 5 6, and you find out that AF over FB equals 5 6. So a very nice application of this theorem. The proof of it uses um, one way to prove it, there's a multiple ways to prove this, um, and the one I want to talk about uses what we refer to as the ratio theorem and the area theorem, which says that um, in a triangle with a Chevian ABE, the area of triangle ABP, so some random point P on BE, over um, area of CBP is just going to be equal to um, the uh, value of the opposite sides, AE over EC. Okay, so ABP over um, CBP, these two triangles, right, where you kind of using point P here, a B in both of them, well, if you look at the opposite sides, that's the ratio of the areas of those two triangles. If we do that all the way around, so for instance, if we look at this triangle and this triangle, we could say the area of ABP, um, um, and actually to make our life easier, we're going to do the area of um, APC over the area of ABP. Well, that's going to equal EC over AE, um, not EC over AE, it's going to equal, um, so APC is going to equal CD over BD for the same reason, right? This triangle is associated with CD, and this triangle is associated with BD by this theorem. And then the last one we'll look at um, is these triangles right here. And so we could say triangle BPC um, or CPB, same thing as there, and triangle um, APC. Well, they're going to have an area equal to um, so either BPC, um, and so it's going to be, um, and APC, so it's going to be BF over AF. So if we multiply the left sides together, we get ABP over the area of CBP times the area of APC over the area of A. BP times the area of BPC over the area of APC equals, and then it's just the three ratios. We're multiplying the left sides together, we're multiplying the right sides together. Is 
right? And it turns out that these areas all end up canceling. All three of those areas cancel, which leaves you with a uh, value of one. And I wrote it actually in the reciprocal of above, but it doesn't matter because the reciprocal of one is equal to one. And so um, it works, as I said, both ways for that reason. And so that is Sheva's theorem. A very nice, very powerful, very important theorem when studying triangles.